over the middle. Touchdown, Louisiana. Coming up next on Inside Louisiana Football, the homecoming sit-down with head coach Billy Napier. We'll introduce you to offensive lineman Robert Hunt. We'll hear from the 2018 Louisiana Athletics Hall of Fame inductees and get a winning taste of the culture. Now, let's go to Dan McDonald and Gerald Broussard for a homecoming game recap. It was a record-setting night at Cajun Field as Louisiana's Raging Cajuns rolled to a 66-38 win over New Mexico State's Aggies. And, yes, that's not a misprint. 66 points by the Cajuns in a night where they basically rewrote the total offense record here at the university. I'm Dan McDonald, along with Gerald Broussard. And, Gerald, we haven't seen this kind of offensive output by the Cajuns, not just this year, but for many, many years. How about forever? I mean, uh, against uh, an FBS opponent, it's never happened. We talked arena ball with Damon Mason, and Dan, you mentioned it. This is arena ball stats, and and it's 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 running, it's throwing, it's with whoever. The numbers are just amazing. 759 yards of total offense, 37 first downs. The Cajuns were 12 of 14 on third down conversions. They run for 344. They pass for 415. 22 of 29 throwing the football. 85 plays, that's 759 yards. Um, it's just, you know, it's staggering. I think that's the word we well, use. Well, and the um is well placed because you just don't know what to say when you hear that. And, you know, a coach talked during the week, Coach Napier talked during the week about the, the problems that New Mexico State's defense gives you because of the scheme. And, and, and you know, Coach Spaziani is, is a guy who's been at Boston College. He's an experienced guy. And, and, you know, Coach was challenged. I think he challenged his coaches to try and come up with some ways to make some plays. And then I'm – they just – the Aggies had no answer. I mean, whatever the Cajuns wanted to do, they did. Running football inside, running football outside, had a couple of gadget plays in there, took advantage of some mismatches uh, talent-wise in coverage against the safeties down the field. And uh, and those throws were as accurate as you could make them by Andre Nunez. So just a good game all around. What about the performance? You mentioned Andre Nunez. 19 of 25, 315 yards, five touchdowns, uh, Tied the school record for touchdown passes, a record held by Jake DeLome. Uh, just, we talked about Andre early in the year being very accurate, very workmanlike, very efficient, and he was every bit of that tonight. Yeah, and when he's on time, when he's on pace and on schedule, he's as good as there is. And and so Andre made, made the plays that were there and to whoever needed to get them made to them. And I think that's the key. I think, you know, you had had Khalif come in to make plays and you had Bam come in to make plays and you had Raheem come in to make plays. And, and, and you know, it started, though, you know, with, with you know, Keenan Barnes was out, but Jamarcus Bradley makes the first play early in the game for the Cajuns and then the momentum started. The rushing game, Elijah Mitchell with 107 yards rushing, three touchdowns. The Cajuns had three players with 90 rushing yards in the game. Trey Regas with 94 yards rushing. Raymond Colley with 90 yards rushing. And every one of them averaged at least seven yards a carry, which was what they did coming in. So, I mean, what do you say? The passing game throws for 415 and the rushing game goes for 344. Yeah, and and you say good job, big guys. Uh, uh, Big guys did a fantastic job and played a number of big guys. Saw Spencer Gardner get in the game early, and and so he was rotating in there for Robert Hunt. Saw a lot of people getting in there, getting some reps at it, and doing a good job against a team that was making some plays. Again, this is against the team. We thought the Cajuns could do some things. We know the Aggies weren't real deep defensively, but I'd have never thought that they'd had seven yards. There's no way to predict that. New Mexico State uh, unable to move against the Cajun defense early. Cajun defense also had a couple stops in the fourth quarter. In between, had some struggles, but again, they able to make stops when they really needed them late in the ball game. And, and found a way to get off the field when had to get off the field. And that's the thing. I think that the, the kickoff return kind of skews the defensive staffs early, but you know now that you seem to make plays and come back to it. Louisiana wins this one 66 to 38 over New Mexico State. They even up their record at three and three and get ready to head on the road next Saturday. They'll take on Appalachian State when they return to Sunbelt play. For Gerald Broussard, I'm Dan McDonald. Coming up next on Inside Louisiana Football.
Introducing Sonic's new Car Hop Classic with double the beef, double the cheese, and now double the choices. Try quarter pound double cheeseburger or slinger with tots for just $2.99. Get them now, ending soon. It's time for the sit down brought to you by Sonic, home of the Raging Cajun Cheeseburger. This is how we Sonic. Welcome back to Inside Louisiana Football. Time once again for the sit down with head coach Billy Napier. And coach, we talked about it last week, getting that momentum after the Texas State win, using it to have a good week of practice and getting a big win on homecoming. Yeah, I was really pleased with the way the players responded. I thought it was our best week of preparation, best week of practice. We started fast. That was one of our missions going in was to start really fast and get off to a good start. And the players responded. Yeah, you lead me right into the next question because we have had a couple of slow starts here in the first five weeks of the year, but not this time. Uh, you hit him early and often. First drive, six plays, 75 yards, 210 off the clock. Andre hits Jamarcus Bradley for a 50-yard touchdown. Yeah, huge play on third long, you know, and, and really good protection. I thought our line did a really good job. Running back did a good job picking up the blitzer. And great job by Andre moving in the pocket. Great throw, and Jamarcus finished it from there. The defense gets a quick three and out, and again, six plays, only two minutes off the clock this time, and Bam gets a touchdown, uh, another 30-yard touchdown from Andre. Great to see Bam Jackson get on the boards, you know, a guy who really didn't get many touches in the first four or five games. For him to have that level of production was great. We felt like he deserved it. The guy is one of the harder workers that we have. Really good teammate, and uh, I think our guys were excited for him to have some success. On the ensuing kickoff, uh, it was a huge play in the game because the, the wind really knocked down the kickoff. Big scrum. It winds up going out of bounds at about, what, the three-yard line. Uh, we get penalized for illegal touching, but uh, they took the, uh, that opportunity of not, us not scoring that third touchdown, and three plays later, they, they stuck it in the end zone. Yeah, the, you know, this team had some explosive skilled players. Uh, and I, and I think for the most part, our defense did a good job. But this number one that they got, he's just a sophomore. But um, I hope we don't ever have to see that guy again. He's a really good football player. But you're right about the wind. You know, the wind was a huge, huge deal in the kicking game. Uh, and I think it affected the game, the kick location for both teams. You know, when, whoever had the wind advantage really did a good job in the return game. Uh, third drive, now the offense is like a well-oiled machine at this point. Um, and you score again. This time Nunez hits Trey Regis, and he absolutely trucks a guy to get in the end zone. Yeah, this group of running backs we got are, are pretty talented, and certainly they all complement each other. They're all a little bit different. Uh, but we're starting to get, you know, we're starting to play our brand of football. We want to be methodical, I think, to complement our defense. We've got to do a good job. Uh, getting a lot of first downs, chew up some clock. We did a really good job of that in the first half with the time of possession. New Mexico State takes the ensuing kickoff back for a touchdown. But again, your fourth drive of the game, you answer right back. This time a reverse to Ernest Patterson. He goes 79 yards, and what speed he showed on that play. Yeah, Ernest is a talented guy, man. One of the faster guys that we have. We felt like we needed to get the momentum back after the kickoff return. And really a well-executed play by lots of different players. Jamarcus Bradley did a great job. Robert Hunt, uh, Levi did a great job leading him out in front. So well-executed play and uh, big play in the game. On their next possession, you get a big fourth down stop. And then uh, you respond with a six-play, 77-yard drive. This time, Elijah Mitchell goes 31 yards for the touchdown. Yeah, great block by uh, the center. Cole Prudham gets out in front, covers up the backer, I thought. Deion Ray actually had a great block on the perimeter on that play. And Elijah Mitchell, man, this guy's got a knack, especially on that outside zone play. And I'm glad he's got two more years after this year. Uh, on the next drive, um, another efficient touchdown drive, seven plays, 71 yards, two and a half minutes off the clock. And Bam with a fingertip catch, one-handed grab for another touchdown. Yeah, I was hoping we'd see that one on Sports Center, top <laughs> 10. But... Uh, Bam makes those plays in practice, you know, and he's a guy who, very unselfish player, plays well without the ball, great special teams player, and excited to see him have production as a receiver as well. Uh, you score on all seven possessions of the first half. Um, the Aggies come out in the third quarter and put 14 up, 
pretty quick, um, but they always have to give the ball back to, to us. And so Andre hits uh, Raheem alone for a big touchdown. Uh, well, that was his yeah. fifth of the game. Well executed screenplay. You know, Bam, another guy playing without the ball. I thought Ken Marks and Cole Prudham did a really good job getting out in front on the screen. But well executed play, you know, a play that we had ran earlier in the game a couple times. The ball went to the swing to the running back. This time it ends up going to the jailbreak, and Raheem did the rest from there. Uh, fourth quarter now, the offensive line just owning the line of scrimmage. Elijah scores uh, two touchdowns, but I want to talk about the defense because when, when they had to make some plays, we got two turnovers and two sacks during that fourth quarter. Yeah, big stops, man, you know, and I think uh, we're starting to put more emphasis on getting takeaways. Our guys are doing a good job attacking the ball. Um, I think in general, we, we saw some guys rise to the occasion and make some plays at critical moments. So let's just talk a little bit about the homecoming event. Uh, you got Hall of Famers, you got uh, former players coming back. Talk about what that weekend was like for you and the team. Yeah, some may think it's a distraction for the team, but I thought it was a huge positive. You know, we really tried to emphasize the importance of playing our brand of football and emphasize it was our culture. We're trying to make a statement about what we're trying to build here. We want the people that went to school here, alumni here, fans, people in the area to be proud of the type of ball that we play. Uh, and I think we got that accomplished. We played uh, good football for the most part on Saturday. App State, let's turn the page to the next opponent. They're 4-1. and one. Their only loss is an overtime loss to Penn State. Not many weaknesses on this football team. Yeah, really good football team and good f football program. You know, they've sustained success. Uh, really impressed with Coach Satterfield and the way their team plays in all three phases. Uh, they've recruited well. They've got a fast athletic team uh, and present a number of challenges. So this will be a big challenge for our football team. I think our guys are excited about the opportunity. Raging Cajuns and Mountaineers at 2.30 Central Time on ESPN Plus from Boone, North Carolina. Coming up next on Inside Louisiana Football, we introduce you to Big G offensive lineman Robert Hunt. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco, Zydeco. if you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. Zydeco, if you're happy and you know it, then your feet will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco, Zydeco. if you're happy and you know it's Monge, if you're happy and you know it's Monge, Monge. if you're happy and you know it, nothing God will help you show it. If you're happy and you know it's Monge, Monge. Coach Billy Napier, and you're watching Inside Louisiana Football. Hello again, everyone. I'm Dan McDonald. We're here at Sonic, America's drive-in, with Robert Hunt, junior on the Raging Cajun football team. And Robert, how's your season gone so far? Well, the season's been well. Um, it's going well. It's not exactly how we pictured it to be right now, but um, we got a lot of ball to play and we definitely look forward to changing the season around. You're an offensive lineman, which means that you toil in anonymity. You, mm. you, don't, you don't get the headlines and so mm -hmm. forth. Uh, do you sometimes wish, you know, hey, I'd, I'd like to, to tote the ball for a couple of times and just see what would happen? No, no not really. Um, in high school, I used to um, play receiver and tight end and stuff like that. So I, I got those, I had those days before the glory days. Um, but I, I, I'm a team player. I like doing what I like to do. I like doing what I do so I can like um, help the team out. You were a receiver? Yeah, I was. I, 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 would, I would not want to be the D-back back there and so forth. But also in high school, you were a basketball player and, and a really good one. Um, did you ever think about you know trying it, you know, trying to say, maybe I can do a two-sport deal? Well, yeah. Um, my junior year, honestly, I like started playing like more AAU basketball and things like that. Um, I started like, traveling like to Dallas and different areas to play basketball, and um, I got a couple offers like to go to different high schools to play basketball and just focus on basketball, so I can like probably go play at a, a Division One, maybe a Division Two level. But um, football was just that thing that I loved doing. 
You're from the Golden Triangle area, so South Louisiana is not that different for you. Mm. But I've got to ask you, uh, crawfish or jambalaya? Jambalaya, I hate crawfish. <laughs> uh, boudin or cracklins? Boudin. Goals for the rest of this year? Uh, goals really for me and hopefully for the whole team is just to win. We want to win. We want to um, come out at the end as champions, Sun Belt champions. And that's really that's pretty much the goal for us to go live really. I, 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 I want to. I want to just stand and be a champion. I just want to be a champion. After you finish your college career, what would you like to do? Uh, of course, I want to go to the NFL, try to play in the league a couple years. Um, I also want to start real estate, like I want to be a real estate agent, of course, and um, I also want to coach. So I'm in school right now to focus on coaching and um, like be a PE coach and stuff like that, so a teacher. I wouldn't mind like teaching special ed kids and stuff like that, so I swear, that's, kind of, that's, that's kind of the path that I want to take, but I definitely, um, I'm definitely interested in um, Real estate. We're at Sonic America's Drive-In with Robert Hunt of the Raging Cajun football team. This recognition is the biggest honor that I have ever received personally. So to say I'm excited and happy about it would be an understatement to say the least. So this is a really special day, a happy day, an exciting day. And I think if I could write a song that uses those words. <laughs> How I feel about being in the Hall of Fame is I'm very excited, I'm honored, and now that all the nerves have finally subsided, I just want to enjoy the experience and soak it all in with some really, really excellent people. I can't, I can't say anything more, and especially one that's sitting in the room with me right now, my coach. I'm Yvette Gerard. Spent 24 years on this campus. Um, I was a student athlete, played volleyball, and. I am the original coach of Lady Cajun softball. I gave birth to this magnificent program. Um, it's the best years of my life, the climb to the top from nothing. Being inducted into this Hall of Fame has meant everything to me. Um, I can come home again. Um, I can wear my vermilion and white proudly. And the night means everything to me and my family. I was at home when I received the phone call from, from the athletic director, Dr. Maggard. Uh, and he seemed to say, congratulations, Damon Mason. He introduced himself and said, you know, you'll be inducted into the Hall of Fame uh, this year. And I was just like, wow, man, thank you. I'm, I'm very honored, I'm very thrilled. And as I said before, I took a deep breath and then you know, my whole career started flashing before my eyes and think about all the things that I had to endure to get here. You know, so it, it was just a, a very joyous moment. And the first thing I did was call my wife and say, baby, I got it. <laughs> Honestly, it feels incredible to be here to be inducted in the Hall of Fame. I'm in great company with all my fellow inductees. I feel like I'm back to my second home, which is Lafayette. Um, I'm originally from Moscow, but uh, Lafayette um, has become my second home while I was going to college here. And I've already seen so many familiar faces and uh, I feel so, uh, so happy to see them and I feel like I, I saw family. When I got the call from Coach Tony Robichaud that I was going to be inducted to the Hall of Fame for the Asian Cajuns, I was at my kitchen uh, island making some breakfast, I believe. And uh, when he said it, it just kind of caught me off guard. I wasn't ready for that. We've had conversations in the past about numerous things. And uh, it just kind of hit you all at once that, oh my God, that, that, that just happened. Uh, you don't have any words to say when that does, when that comes across that kind of news. So uh, just speechless. To perform, you need speed, skill, strength. With every muscle, every move, you push your body to reach its full potential. But sometimes, you just can't push through the pain. That's when you know it's time to address it. So when injury puts you on the sidelines, trust us to get you back in the game. Lord Sports Care, the team behind your team.
Sonic's $2.99 Car Hop Classic, a juicy quarter pound double cheeseburger, or a flavorful signature slinger with golden brown crispy tots. A deal so nice, you should order it twice, because it's only $2.99. Hurry in for a Car Hop Classic, ending soon. UL Lafayette was the best fit for my daughter because we looked at many different schools. But when we walked on this campus and did our tour, we knew that this was the school for her because of the way everyone made her feel. We at the Office of First Year Experience spent a lot of time working to help students, the freshmen and the parents with the transition from high school to college. And we want to make sure that parents and students have all the answers that they need to make sure that once they come here in August, they're prepared and ready for classes. The communication here from the university has been outstanding because we're constantly being contacted either via text or email from the Office of First Year Experience to really make that experience unmatched. UNIV 100 is a course where students really can take something that they're really excited about, but in the scope of that class, we have helping resources. So the UNIV 100 instructor and peer mentor are there to help those students individually through those challenging steps in that first semester. We're transitioning them from a home to a new home. Pass over the middle, touchdown Louisiana! I'm head coach Billy Napier and you're watching Inside Louisiana Football. This game is meant to be played a certain way. It's meant to be played with an edge. Let's make it very clear who's gonna play with the most effort and toughness today. And let's make a statement about what type of culture we got for this red and white team right here. Does everybody understand that? Oh, you're playing for a lot of people today. Firstly, you're playing for the guys in this room. But there's a lot of people that came before you. There's a lot of people that associate with this area and this university. Today's homecoming, man. All right, we need to represent this place the right way. Does everybody understand that? Yes, Let's play to our standard and play for the people in this room. You work, man. All right, I want it to pay off. It's time. Everybody hear me? Yes, sir. Let's go earn it. Here we go. Earn it on three. One, two, three, earn, earn it. it. Straight back to throw. Got a pass over the middle. Bradley caught 35. 30 down to 25. Makes a move. 20 to the 15. 10. 5. Touchdown, Louisiana. Nat gets his back to throw. Looking to his lap. Down he goes. Nunez going for all of it to the end zone. And the pass is caught. Touchdown, Louisiana. over a man at the two-yard line and got into the end zone and the Cajuns have got a 22-7 lead. There's Mitchell, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Louisiana. Nunez goes to the end zone and the pass is caught. Bam Jackson, what a catch. Bam celebrating on the sideline. Second touchdown catch of the day. Louisiana leads it 45 to 21 with 11 seconds to go until halftime. We got to learn our lesson from last week. We got to turn up the volume and go out here and start fast again this half. Does everybody understand that? All right, let's put it all together. Complete game is what we talked about. That was the mission. 
All right. If you want to make them tap out, they're ready to do it. You just got to go do it right now. Does everybody understand that? Yes, All right, here we go. Make them tap out on three. One, two, three. Yes, here we go. Zero, zero. Let's go. Good job. Let's go. Good job. Good job. Good job. Let's go, man, on the hop. Realize that the Cajuns are on the pace to score 112 in this game. 25 below to the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Louisiana. Hand off to Mitchell. Easy first down. He's still on his feet and he's in the end zone. Touchdown, Louisiana. Atkins back to throw and it was hit from behind. Ball's loose. Cajuns have it, I believe. And rush is coming and down he goes at midfield. He's going deep over the middle and the pass is intercepted. Cajuns win this one tonight by the score of 66 to 38. Well, 759 yards in offense this evening. That is a school record. You win some, and you win some. Ain't no losing, Bill. That's a hell of a feeling, man. Yeah. Say what you want to say. You can say that we didn't play well at times, okay? You can say a lot about what happened out there tonight, okay? But I'm gonna tell you something. You, you cannot say that we didn't stay together. Does everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Okay, and that's what we gotta learn. We got to work in all three phases to win the football game. The objective is to win the football game. You're starting to figure it out, man. If you prepare the right way during the week, you get that type of experience on Saturday. Remember what we always say. Very few are are willing to do what's required to do that. Everybody hear me? Okay, and, that, and that's that's the culture that we're trying to build here. Are we there yet? No. Everybody hear me? There's a lot of stuff out there that we got to get fixed. It's not acceptable. Everybody hear me? Yes, sir. sir. Okay, and I promise you, just like we always say, we said in the team meeting room the other day we would dictate what happens on that field Saturday. We did. But I'm gonna tell you, there's gonna be tons of mistakes. We're gonna go back and look at this tape. And you're going to be, we're going to be critical of you. You need to get ready. You're going to walk in the doors tomorrow. It ain't going to be all happy go lucky. Does everybody understand that? Yes, sir. So to go where we want to go, we got to eliminate some of that crap. Everybody hear me? Yes, sir. I don't care if we won by seven or won by 50 tonight. Some of the stuff that, I, that happened out there was not good enough. It was not up to our standards. If we want to win this division, if we want to win this conference, everybody in the room has got to get better at what they do going forward. Yes, sir. I'm talking all phases. All right, that's the key to the drill here. You're starting to get it. All right, but where we want to go, there's another whole other level out there that you haven't seen yet. Okay, we're going there. Does everybody hear me? Yes, sir. I'm going to kick the door down, but we're going there. Does everybody hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, so do it our way, and we're going to have some success.